Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the training on uh, scientific uh, landfill availability and operations. Uh, so as you all know, uh, I think a couple of you had also joined the training we had last week. So these uh, trainings are aligned to the Climate Smart Cities Assessment Framework. And uh, this particular training, what we're doing is also in association with UNEP, which is part of the countermeasures uh, project. So I'll um, uh, invite my counterpart from uh, UNEP uh, to uh, take you all through a little bit more details on the countermeasures and what this particular project is. Uh, over to you, Shubhi. Thank you, Vaishnavi. Uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you all so much for joining. Um, very quickly sharing um, that we all understand that plastic pollution is a um, is a huge problem today that we are facing, and the government is taking many steps to address this problem. Um, in supporting this, um, you know, in supporting some of these joint initiatives um uh, you know at, we at unep are presently running a project called the countermeasures project this is a japan funded project which is presently in its second phase um this started in 2019 and the second phase finishes in march 2022 um, under this project, we've largely been looking at, you know, um, uh, gathering scientific data around macroplastics, microplastics along the Ganges River. Um, and uh, we've been understanding at what leaks, um, from which pathways, um, and uh, where are some of those hotspots, and how do we map them across the plastic value chain. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, while we're collecting some of this very important scientific data, um, we are looking at the training and capacity building um, for various stakeholders um, so that this uh, scientific data can inform some of the decisions um, of the various stakeholders. And one of such is the urban local bodies. Uh, we are very grateful to Vaishnavi, her team, and at NIUA for you know helping us uh, scale up some of these um, initiatives and uh, support us in you know uh, sharing these training and capacity building modules um, to uh, um, you know a, a, a number of cities. Uh, also, particularly thankful to Nakul who would also be um, you know conducting today's training. Um, now, now, in addition to the training and capacity building work, we are also looking at the policy uh, space where we're closely working with the government of India and um, other city uh, and state level officials to uh, support them in, um, you know, taking appropriate actions and uh, developing relative documents um, that can, um, you know, help in implementation of uh, proper waste um, uh, management uh, rules and regulations. So this is quite pretty much in a nutshell. Um, and um, uh, you know, I'm very happy to share any further information that you'd require, perhaps at a later date. Um, we hope that some of you who had you know joined us in the previous two trainings um, can draw the connections between the, the series of trainings that we're doing at the moment. Um, and um, should there be any questions around, um, you know, any additional components um, that you might want to know about, we'd be very, very happy to share. So that's uh, pretty much, um, you know, very quickly from my side. Uh, Vaishnavi, over to you. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Shubhi. So also from the National Institute of Urban Affairs, uh, the Climate Center of Cities that I'm part of, uh, we've been doing these trainings aligning to the Climate Smart Cities Assessment Framework. And the focus this month has been on waste management. So um, I would not waste any more time. And I'll invite our subject matter expert, uh, Mr. Nakul Sardana, to take you all through today's training, which is on scientific landfill management. Um, Nakul, over to you. Thank you, Vaishnavi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this training session being organized by UNEP and uh, NIUA. Uh, as I can see, the most of the credentials are primarily from the uh, from those participants who have been always already in the space of waste management. Most of you guys are working with municipal corporation. Uh, it's good that uh, like we can we can you know definitely interact on the same level and uh, I'll be happy to take up the question if you drop down them in the chat box. 
so as the context has been already explained that uh, this is training is a part of the climate smart cities assessment framework 2.0 and uh, and the major focus for today's training is on the scientific landfill availability and its operations uh, as the content suggests we'll be discussing in detail uh, on the lines of uh, like in 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 our urban india what we see the landfills are not being managed scientifically all through though we have the examples of scientific landfills so how one can take that sort of an approach and uh, how one can take that sort of an approach and uh, uh, and uh, go forward uh, to build uh, one such uh, state of art landfills which are scientific uh, and as well as technologically sound overall uh, uh, and 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 the major purpose for it to accommodate the waste which is coming from the city area and as well as not so, uh, and to control the contamination be it the air or be it the water and uh, and having a positive social impact on the livelihood uh, biodiversity and so on so without uh, taking any more time uh, i'll ask my colleague to share the content and then we are good to start off with sorry please Hi, is it visible, Nakul? Yep, we are good to start. Thank you. Uh, so, our, our, as I mentioned, our uh, today's topic is scientific landfill availability and its operation. Uh, so, let's start with, uh, discussing. Begin with the discussion with the waste management. Uh, so, what we see, how it is being generated, how it is being managed. Uh, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a path uh, through which the waste travel from its source to the as, as a collection, and then it uh, finally leads to the uh, final disposal, treatment, and disposal. Uh, so what we, what in the collection cycle, we we see that collection, transportation, sorting, segregation, treatment, and final disposal. So uh, on the collection, we mostly see the primary collection, which is being done from the uh, a house to house, which which we even call it a door to door collection. Then the, even the secondary one, which is being done at the dalao level. And the effective transportation, the schemes has improved now. Now we have FCTs, uh, fixed compactor transfer station within the city, rather than having the, you know, open halau goes. And in transportation, there has been a significant improvement. Sorting is coming in place, uh, both at the secondary level at the primary level too. Then the final treatment and disposal, uh, whether you have a waste energy power plant or a composting facility, RD facility in town, or or if if not so far, then definitely. Uh, approaching towards the scientific landfill. Uh, when we when we see you know uh, on on the side of uh, the snapshot, we and, and one of another important focus is the first part is uh, if source reduction. When you see in the table in the matrix there, source reduction and reuse is a is a habitual part of uh, effective waste management. And rest, while you look at the other. Uh, process component like recycling, composting, waste to energy, landfills, those are the part of, uh, uh, driven by the technology piece or the process component. Uh, this is a quick snapshot of uh, uh, waste generation across India in, in one of the in, in major the metro cities and our typical uh, details available in terms of the waste characterization when mostly we see that the 50% is organic and 50% is inorganic. Which inorganic even consists of a CND waste in a non recyclable waste to recyclable waste. What is the need of the R at this moment? While we see that scientific landfill and climate change, how they're associated with each other, we need to understand. Let's just fix up uh, uh, the relationship between the landfill operations or having a landfill with the climate uh, change. Uh, landfills emit out, uh, uh, waste emits out CH4, which is uh, 85 percent more pollutant than of uh, co2 uh this methane and even the consists of the carbon dioxide nitrate water vapor h2s which which is uh is uh very harmful for the nature and and this emission uh holds for the greenhouse gas this greenhouse gas emission holds for the accountability of increased temperature of the earth and it even affects the biodiversity our livelihood our day-to-day -day life right so that's where uh, the waste uh, the reduction and uh, and scientific disposal becomes a, uh, a very critical component to address climate change. It's one of the most uh, one of the consequent of it. Uh, uh, now let us try to understand uh, uh, climate strategy assessment framework, uh, what it really um, uh, means, and what 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 sort of uh, 
uh, you know what all it addressed to it its its primary focus is on energy green buildings urban planning effective mobility air transport air quality management water supply both supply and management and maintaining the quality and waste management waste of all sort of waste uh, uh, with a major focus on solid waste biomedical waste and industrial waste uh, <clears throat> uh, and 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 the intent to have this sort of a framework is to enhance waste aggregation at the source level and both at the secondary level when we are call it secondary it's material recovery facilities which we have started look uh, you know finding and across the across our major cities at least in india uh that we are not directly dumping the waste uh, that to the landfill or sending it to treatment cycle while uh, unorganized segregation was always available both at the primary level and the secondary level but now we see that there has been an institutional approach towards it uh, wherein we have a processing sort of a plant within the city area depending on the size of the city and the population as well uh, where we mostly segregate uh, uh, the inorganic component of the waste which has a direct sale value in the market could be plastic cardboard glass jute and so on various non ferrous materials too and the rest of the material left out goes as a considered as a non recyclable waste which which might can be going can be sent to a processing unit uh, uh, a strengthening towards the cnd waste we see most of the waste i mean i'm i'm spending some more little more time on this slide cnd waste is one of the major component of the solid waste these days but uh, with the With improved efforts in that direction, we see the uh, large CNG facilities across India now, which is coming up, and uh, defining the dumping points, uh, improvement in the operations helps. And and last, and one of the major points that we should manage our landfill scientifically with a more technological approach, so that uh, and keeping in mind that they should not contaminate our groundwater or air quality as well. Uh, so waste management when we talk about the city smart city framework uh, and going beyond the climate action of cpho 2016 uh, so what we get to see is under climate action under cpho 2016 we will now will discuss on the process that contribute to increase the decline in the greenhouse gas emission so uh, this can be the factor which contribute and increase that tree harvesting oil and ore extraction transportation of raw material from one place to another manufacturing product which releases Uh, greenhouse gases uh, am i am i audible uh, by any chance i in somebody if you can yes yes nakul we can hear you yeah, yeah. okay so, yes. okay so it was a pain of silence i just thought of <laughs> checking it and uh, and uh, yeah, and, and the factors which uh, contribute to the ghg i mean which reduces the overall ghg emission uh, are well, are in tune with the uh, recycling and uh, reduction in the waste generation as a result what we see the extract more raw material we should stop i mean the extraction of the more raw material and so as to minimize the gnd and rather than focusing more on the product life cycle and so on uh, uh, so that's that's again one of the principle of the circular economy and uh, Uh, and and we see that this has it has becoming a practice nowadays uh, in our day to day lifestyle too that uh, like platforms like OLX and many other try to enhance that that's another another effort to increase the product life cycle uh, in place. So now uh, we'll be moving on uh, primarily on slide nine. Uh, so be I need your attention here. Uh, now we now we need to understand uh, i mean uh, municipal solid waste and its life cycle all of us we very well understand that as we are coming from the same space uh, there are two way to look at it uh, if we have a mixed waste collection or if i have a separate collection the mixed waste primarily goes for the transportation then there is a sorting of it we get the organic component out of it inorganic inorganic can be treated in thermal plants or the mixed waste can even be treated directly for that matter in an incineration unit but if we segregate that's better and then rdf which is called as a green fuel as well goes for the thermal treatment able to generate good specific amount of energy rdf calorific value we see around 3800 3200 to 4200 specifically in indian rdf front and the bought out items are ash and where in the separate waste i mean we it is directly goes to the where the waste is segregated goes to the mrf and biological treatment for the composting be it aerobic and anaerobic i am sure that you guys all of you are aware that uh, mr modi recently inaugurated asia's largest biogas plant which was based on the aggregated waste and indore has that uh, uh, 
you know has that reputation when it comes to waste segregation at a source level uh discussing it further uh, i would like to uh, a life cycle assessment and waste management the arrows you see in the green uh, are, are a primary two t the uh, the two uh, key component recycling collection and reuse uh, uh so on the on the arrow you see is primarily on focusing on the you know composting process losses open loop recycling uh, closed loop recycling where on the blue what we see is the process involved in waste disposal and treatment uh it it could be lost to environment landfilling incineration or energy recovery collected for recycling uh that's how the overall circular process and life cycle of the waste looks like and the waste management i think the players as it's playing it's a very important role in all the stages of our life so as it is playing in waste management we have different life cycle uh, life cycle assessment tool we have rfid installs we have a smart bin system in place gps has been in the uh, industry since last more than 10 years now we have a closed circuit camera to uh, to supervise the operation uh, app control based city based collection system and and we see that it it it's majorly happening across in the, all the in the metro cities and the tier b cities uh uh <clears throat> now uh, uh So from here on, which we'll be spending some more time on these slides. This was the context. I was trying to set the context about the waste management, its life cycle, from where it generates, what we are what we are supposed to do, what is the connect between uh, climate change and uh, uh, waste management. And now uh, today's topic, as we as, I, as we all have mentioned before, that scientific landfill and component. uh land landfills are typically what are the type of landfill? Let's say start with that. Uh, it's based on the solid waste. industrial waste uh industrial waste uh majorly cnd waste and then hazardous which we see uh across industrial area we have a, a major name in that this is of ramki or of hindustan zinc and so on and then of green waste we don't see the green waste that will so as on but it's a dump site which converts the green waste into composting which is a if it's a relatively higher size the meaning call it a green waste landfill uh, type based on the technology it's a basic landfilling engineered landfill and bioreactor i'll explain that in the uh, in the coming slide a typical cross sectional detail of uh, a landfill which uh, co- uh, which covers the uh, monitoring wells for the groundwater uh, monitoring uh, gas extraction unit different layers there uh, and uh, what is the cell approach to fill it and so on uh, now uh, uh say so what uh, let's let's understand the difference between basic landfilling and linear landfill and bioreactor landfill uh basic landfill is a emergency landfill as what we see the dump site you excavate a particular area uh you uh, uh the operator excavate the particular area dump the waste and uh, refill it again ev- after every operation uh this sort of a site always are with the common consensus of the local body or a uh, or the or uh, Uh, the pop, uh, or the uh, or a population nearby, and uh, it is advised to have a fence site and uh, uh, and should be uh, at least one kilometer away from the common nearby dwellings. Uh, engineered landfill, as what we mostly see, the sort of a tender which municipal corporation releases in India. That's one of the most common type. Uh, capacity is it is it is being always advised, and we see that factors that environmental is. risk assessment and environmental baseline study has to be conducted before approaching that this sort of a project gas is flared or even at times captured for the energy production bioreactor landfills uh, uh, are <clears throat> you know uh, are those where we basically focus uh, on uh, faster treatment of the wet waste acceleration of the biological process using some inoculums compounds catalytic activities and uh, Are we even uh, <clears throat> promoting condition necessary for the microorganism? As we mentioned, that we use uh, external agents there, and uh, and there is a high yield of gas which is being captured for these landfills because a controlled in a controlled uh, reaction, uh, all the all that being monitored, and you get a high yield of the methane out of it. now let us understand the you know the methods uh, how do we really you know on the basis of site condition and the geography how do we operate a, a landfill one is area method uh, it's it's mostly above ground we created 
uh, <clears throat> we do it in cell wise manner we define a cell we compact it on every day basis we cover it by the soil cover and and then another cell is being created while uh, there is another method uh, uh, we see there three methods so the second method is a trench method we define a particular trench trench is a uh, uh, under the ground uh, below the ground and uh, a particular uh, <clears throat> what what do i call it right uh, a, a lane is, or a lane is defined where we prepare the trench and build the fill the new material follow the same process that we compact it and then cover it with the uh, then cover it with the basic layer and uh, and then again again go for the next day filling um, so the trench keeps on filling by the time it reaches to the design height um, and uh, the last method uh, uh, i should say the ramp method is uh, which is a mix of a trench and a area method the cell method above ground which do it uh, a waste is spread and compacted uh, on the existing floor the uh, cover material is excavated directly in front of the waste uh, so covering material keeps on coming so you 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 excavate it use that material and, uh, and uh, uh, to cover the uh, spread uh, waste uh, it could be a daily waste and at times we even decide on operation that the covering shall not be done on every day basis depending on the availability of compact uh, availability of covering material and the lead time of it so at uh, even in city area we see that uh, if the landfill is a scientific landfill or engineered landfill we approach it in a way that we cover the material after every 3 days uh um so most of the operations which are designed here i mean uh, gets a new flavor when it comes to monsoon we we need to be very diligent in that fine period uh uh for the depression and valley sort of a method it's a natural area where you get the natural uh, terrain in a such a way that uh, it's a low lying area it mostly being used in a uh, hilly area or where already the you know some sort of a query has been developed because of the uh, un, unofficial uh, you know excavation or and so on so we use this na- natural and artificial depression which it exists to build up the landfill and how to operate it so the design consideration when we see it uh, we we primarily evaluate uh, while designing any scientific landfill we talk about uh, uh, infrastructure facilities uh, uh, landfill capacity and life uh, so any thought which when it comes to uh, landfill design is primarily begins with as i mentioned uh, uh, baseline environmental study and then for the existing infrastructure facility we define it we design the landfill we define the capacity and life uh availability of land is one of the uh, major point two uh so uh, in india it's most of the bad time backward integration we have land say of 10 acres how much for how long it will be able to serve the city at times the landfill tenders are five years at times they're of seven years in the integrated contracts they are even of 20 to 30 years as well if we see uh in the scheme of january m1 or both and two and the com- and in the design component are again involving you know the stop slope stability surface water drainage leach collection management gas collection is that is a part of it final covering and and capping system uh, how do we going to maintain and monitor the overall environmental quality uh, and uh, if by post closure what are the maintenance uh, what is our, what is our particular approach towards the maintenance of the landfill so site selection criteria uh, uh, as we all are aware that uh, and i'm well informed on this uh, as per the 2016 ms uh, 2016 msw rule that it should have a uh, just, i'm i'm not uh, sweeping out the numbers uh, it should be uh, have a safer distance from the lake and any water body from the river it could be river uh, should not be there in the flood plains should have a minimum distance of 200 meter from highways uh should be away from the uh, habitation and uh, public parks public school and public facility even should we uh, while we look at the landfill we even need uh, airport clearance and why do we need that it's a very interesting point to note that we uh, that we see a lot of flies above the landfill and and just to make sure that uh, if there is a landfill facility automatically you'll see the flies on the top of it uh, and uh, birds all all around it so just to make sure that it doesn't hinder uh, uh during the uh, uh, uh flight operation so we need to get that sort of airport clearance and uh, 
and definitely i mean we need to have a you know a, a responsibility is a, is primarily live with the municipal corporation or the urban local bodies and uh, i intend to be close to the waste processing facility or or in existing pre treatment uh, solid waste processing facility uh, soil investigation doesn't play a very uh, uh, very categorical role but very important because uh, 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 because as per that we get to know the subsoil water strata uh, where the water table lies uh, while uh, structure stability is not uh, till the time it's not a flood plain area its structural stability is not that very important because it's a very distributed load across the land piece uh, now the operational procedure is uh, uh, for the landfill after the site selection it is above above ground then we'll have to make a bund uh, it, it's mostly in the trapezoidal format and and mostly and, uh, and practically we should go below ground we make a uh, we excavate it in a form of a trapezoid uh, we clean prepare the subgrade as and we prepare the base area after excavation then uh, uh, our, our first step is uh, is to make ensure that uh, uh, we have the compacted earth available and then the the process starts with a very firstly with a, having a clay liner then uh, having first of all having trenches in ground then the clay liner being laid then the stp liner being laid then the leachate collection pipe being laid and uh, all that we have a a drainage layer then the gravel subsoil layer on the top of it and then the waste comes uh, so so the idea is that it should be designed in such a way that uh, the waste doesn't have any direct touch with the directly with the surface of earth so there are different layers and the leachate which is one of the major component of solid waste passes through all these layers and get to the reach to this uh, perforated sdp pipe uh which are which are header and footer sort of an arrangement where the uh, uh footer pipe collects the waste and takes it directly to the header water and from header water through the pump we take it out and send it to the leachate uh collection pond where it where it gets processed and similarly the while after processing the same water comes back to the landfill for the faster uh, uh rate of biodegradation uh, as it it becomes some one sort of an inocule uh by of its own due to due to the regular degradation process of it um uh, uh then we even keep a uh, mind uh, uh, like the collection uh, we should uh, we should be very diligent while collecting that what sort of a waste we are sending to landfill and disposal and containment we should have an operation in uh, it should be a cell wise we should not spread the waste all out, all throughout the landfill it should be a cell wise approach we define a particular corner we work on it we spread it we compact it close it um uh, with a covering layer uh shall work on the order control primarily for the order control we we make sure that we are covering the dli uh, waste which is coming to it and the final derivative out of it is the renewable energy uh and the, uh, if we have a gas collection system the methane which is coming out of the waste can be captured by a uh, by one of the mecha- technology based mechanism and we capture it and we send it out to the for the final compression and dispensing so uh, this is a typical uh, uh, you know one of the section available to understand uh, so we can you just large one of the pictures on the left hand side yeah zoom in please yeah so what we see is uh, there is a leak detection system in place primary leachate collection pipes slope cell upgrade why the slope is being maintained because so that the water can flow and reach to these pipes and uh, Uh, uh and leachate collection pipes are available liner system as i mentioned gcl geosynthetic clay liner or we use the direct clay and then secondary liner system is hdp geo membrane and so on uh on the right hand side we have a, a gas uh, we it, it's it's an identical example of the gas uh, collection we have through the liner system there is a gas extraction wells there is a header pipe on the top uh, and uh, for through that there is a flow by leachate plant and lfg gas flaring unit or uh, a gas capturing at a particular temp, uh, pressure of fiber it can be compressed and can be filled in cascade uh it's advisable uh, for the biogas either we use it directly just for the for the for any of the kitchen purpose or if you want to if you want to use it as a bio cng then uh, it is advisable to have a gas upgradation system in place uh, 
So the equipment which are which are being involved in landfill operations are primarily backhoe loader, excavator, and bulldozer. So a backhoe loader is spreading mostly. Excavator is used to create the burns and build up the landfill. Uh, at times, excavator we even see excavator at landfill site. Why? Because JCB is very much prone to the getting punctured and regular maintenance. Where excavator is a such a robust equipment. As it works on chains, so that you don't have that problem of getting puncture every day because if you, it's a very heterogeneous mix, in especially Indian way. So you are not sure what's coming in. And uh, bulldozer is for the compaction of the waste and compaction of the covering layer. So scientific landfill. So uh, what are the advantage? Uh, it's uh, waste treated uh, during disposal in a much scientific manner. It's a controlled extraction of a methane gas. It can be used as a uh, renewable energy uh, for multiple other purposes. And it even uh, there is no risk of pollutant uh, going underground and even can have a control on the air pollutant as well. Uh, and yeah. it has a social impact too. Uh, doesn't really. If you have a scientific landfill, the city real estate would be always be considered as a favorable one. Otherwise, if you see across the landfill sites, the real estate, are, real estate rates are always down and keep on struggling in that part. So now we there is an incentive. If you look at the example of Indore, Surat, Bhopal, uh, effective waste treatment has added, uh, uh, yeah, like clean cities are blue white cities for every society. And, uh, and that we see finally resulting in the financial numbers, a day-to-day -day lifestyle of the people who are living there. COVID-19 and its impact on landfills, uh, what we are trying to discuss here is COVID-19, uh, as we see, uh, we, there is no uh, such a well-established method to separate uh, uh, what we call it biomedical waste from the uh, from the solid waste, and it has re and this has a negative impact on it. All that uh, syringe, uh, biomedical waste, like syringe, surgical face mask, disposal blades, and every other thing, face shields, are currently going in the... Uh, in the waste and these waste are being transporting to getting different sites, but mostly we have landfills. So landfills are getting unnecessary plastic waste or non-degradable waste. Uh, and it has increased, uh, increased the overall uh, daily transportation capacity. Uh, wherein uh, it has a negative side too, because such things doesn't get, uh, you know, decompose at site level. Uh, this is a glo global uh, share of face masks discarded as, as because of the COVID waste. We see a, a larger impact is uh, majorly in the first world countries. Uh, we even live stand on second uh, parameter to it, the green cover, India, and the major we see in uh, in Canada, uh, South America, even in Australia, some of the South African countries too. Imagine trends, what to look for in 2022, something really interesting, what your uh, information Information technology will will definitely add, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, various ways to aid in waste management. Uh, uh, composting initiative, this is a decentralized approach or at a very household level. Uh, this will become a, a part of a regular program of the IEC activities as well. Uh, they'll definitely look forward to find out more uh, ways to address plastic waste problem. Uh, uh, it can be used as a house high quality resin that will replace the current greenhouse gas emission prime resin that is used in the plastic industry. Uh, we'll try to find out more ways to generate energy out of the waste. Uh, recycling industry will grow and it will support the waste to energy uh, 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 it, it will support and keep keep on putting the pressure on the WT plant because uh, if you are recycling heavily, then the uh, WT plants are not. Uh, uh, are not in tune with their calorific value because the most of the recyclables has the higher calorific value. Uh, uh, there is a there is a prominence that uh, uh, government and local bodies will keep promoting WT units, but now the intent is to have a RDO based incineration unit or the bio CNG unit. Uh, packaging and sustainable packaging will change the recyclable industry. And uh, the last point, uh, solution will include thermal ones. Uh, incineration, pyrolysis, electrification is coming into space now, and that has been discussed on a larger landscape too. So one of the case studies for the landfill design, the, the city area is located, uh, we're talking about the Pune city, and uh, 
as we all understand this case study is primarily the pune city has been able to address it uh, has moved from the um, basic landfilling or dump sites to towards the scientific landfill site uh, we are trying to map where the rack picker the informal sector is involved which we need to make it a formal sector to bring them in a mainstream of the society and and the way it has been done is like waste primary collection transfer to the ward bins we have a 1.2 meter cube of bin or 20 100 liter bins and then the ward collection centers we even call it nowadays fcts or a transfer station and then from transfer chain it's been sent to the landfilling or the for the processing and from processing whatever is being left out has been sent to the uh landfill so uh what has been done uh, where we see the mapping of the rack picker uh, towards the where this in processes uh proposed methodology what we modified design for the landfill is uh, uh, it has it has been de- uh, developed in a very integrated approach towards the waste disposal and energy generation board uh this can be applied for the new landfill what we are trying to say here is that earlier it was a, a a process where we were dumping just dumping the waste but having a scientific landfill in place and start capturing the gas makes it more technically uh, technologically sound and financially viable too and uh, uh, it even keeps that area particularly clean and keep adding the premium in the real estate of that look uh, of the of the uh of the uh, lo- uh, of the local area uh uh and and this even helps in uh, understanding and characterizing the waste what sort of a waste should go to the landfill uh, it's not advisable that we keep uh, from disposing of and filling off the landfill with a wet waste it's not advisable we should have a we should treat them at, at a very lower level through centralized uh, or a decentralized approach and uh, uh and uh, uh, it overall uh, you know uh, a look if you look at the overall number of the energy which can be generated through to bio cng uh, bio cng it can uh, effectively manage we can effectively manage 6% 6% of india's gas need if we start uh, treating our wet waste scientifically uh, using anaerobic digestion units next case study is of ghana uh, similar to what we are discussing uh, uh, but in ghana uh, uh, there was it was a uh, purpose of this study flow to explain the operation activities in ghana uh, in especially in the uh, south african continent uh, waste management has recently started and uh, the city was uh, generating around 20 to 2000 metric ton of the waste uh, on a every day basis uh, and uh, collection was around 70% of the total waste generated Uh, it is the third highest third metropolitan area of where where we see the waste generation and the disposal uh what uh, and the result and discussion was primarily around the type of equipment used at site to to improve the operation of the landfill site the waste reception was being improved deposition as in how to uh, how to deposit uh, and and in terms to build up the cells of that site management litter control dust control surface water and leach management all that is what we discussed in the past was being uh, kept in mind while uh, uh, starting off with a new way to have a landfill operations a uh, conclusion as in uh, like uh, as we discussed the conclusion for the every scientific approach will more or less be the same i mean uh, in terms of environmental impact social impact and uh, a local administrative impact uh, it it uh, if you have a scientific landfill Uh, it's simple that you get the get the gas order is controlled the site area is developed city has a better life and uh, even rack pickers have a you know they they become the from the informal sector they become the part of the formal sector operator is is has started making sense and uh, that landfill that particular land in india land has a highest cost so if you just fill it by something which is which can which can have a direct resale value be for that from the inorganic waste or uh, We talk about organic waste treatment where you can generate methane out of it or compost so it's advisable that uh, having a very close eye on what is going to the land well and the provision to do that is has to have a, taken an integrative approach uh, where uh, we even need just we that means that we just won't need land since we even need uh, plastic waste processing unit wet waste processing unit so it should be an integrative approach towards it if you want to make it more effective and approve and and should even promote the local entrepreneurship 
at city level uh so seven steps to approach developing a municipal solid waste management plan we talk about policies programs and legal frameworks and the assessment of the current situation in gap analysis where we stand as on date and where the gap is uh stakeholder involvement in consultation at every level uh then preparation of a draft uh, uh, you call it a business plan or a waste management plan in a framework uh, to it then schedule how we will be implementing it implementation schedule um uh, at the another round of the stakeholder consultation onboarding and for the execution of msmwm plan and uh, its final validation and then municipal council will approve it and send it for the execution to onboard the execution agency it can be directly executed by the ms uh, by the municipal corporation or there could be a ppp arrangement or there, there could be an epc contract as well different stakeholders uh, all all of you are already a stakeholder and understand uh, whosoever i mean from waste is something which is related to everyone a nascent baby with a newly born baby even generate from waste and the person who dies even generate from waste so all of us are a stakeholder at a very household level businesses industries commercial establishment informal sector ngos uh, and and so on and while on the top i mean it's from the go- complete government machinery town planners uh accounting and financial treasury everyone is involved whosoever is participating in fund from the till planning the project so where the where the cost goes it's a fund run cost is land acquisition permits building construction as a developing the plan and developing the landfill ic activity capital cost is uh, for the plant and machinery for the equipment and capital cost is like financing cost then operating is uh daily onm cost cost of refurbishment of the equipment plant and machinery iec activity keep on occurring while you start doing such activities back end cost is site closure when you're finishing it up building and equipment decommissioning you take them out there is a cost in that too the retirement health benefit for the current employee which are getting relief from that project uh, contingency is uh, again on the remediation liability cost like property damage personal injury injuries site level injuries too Uh, environmental cost the cost involved in mitigating uh, that adverse effects on environmental uh, cost of implementing plan and downstream of the impacts too and social process how i mean is it, has it been able to improve the quality of life so there are different way to measure it but these are the overall co- uh, you know uh, cost which are involved it could be but it's not got to be a cost maybe such thing while you look at social cost could be a positive number too where we have been able to do it time more scientifically it becomes a positive impact as well that cost has a so positive social impact fund sources uh, so to begin it uh, i'll explain that very uh, in a very layman terms so it start with the central government mostly funds the program which are happening at the state level or the municipal level then there are state government grants and state government funds and the municipal government funds uh the major funding comes from uh, different development banks too adb world bank uh, african development bank and so on then there are loans from the uh, banks mostly uh, we uh, we get don't see that it's it's too easy to get the loan for the waste management space because we don't have that large success story and then the private equity funds are uh, investing in such projects then we have a, a organization like cdc fcdo which are pro to a develop uh, which has a intent to develop such sort of a business in developing uh, developing countries which has been still struggling to fix up on their basic needs and uh, and and the, then the revenue streams what you are making out of the business the selling from post energy and rds and so on something very interesting we talk about zero landfill um, how do we achieve that then the basic um, i would say is like you start tracking your waste what define what zero waste means as then we we'll have to recycle every other thing around what you see and keep a very close eye on even your waste generation of every day uh, as, uh and try to reduce whatever it can be whatever it can be reuse within your household engage with community have a dialogue with them strengthen the partnership among the community among the different stakeholders uh, regulatory framework should be very uh, is a very important uh, uh, step to Uh, improvising efforts on both on recycling uh, reusing and every other best practice engine and logo based to the technology in our rules we all uh, are well aware of them so it's a mix of a uh, 
or a fusion of a prevention reuse recycle recover uh reprocess and reinvent that find out just refurbish it and make it as give it a new life and then finally dispose it uh one of the principle of the circular economy too we'll move to the last slide now uh zero landfill model uh what we see uh alapuza way i mean uh this is one of the unit program which was being uh, uh very successfully implemented uh the background was uh as we see that the same problem that uh had been collecting segregated garbage from home uh, and uh, and and dumping it to the landfill site so what has been done in this regard uh, uh primary there was a litter of the uh, and uh, littering all around the uh, water bodies and uh, even on the roads so it was proposed that to while there is a segregation of waste can be done why not to have a aerobic and anaerobic digestion facilities where the gas and compost can be generated so there we see get to see the number of biogas plants being installed at smaller level and even composting bin uh, smaller composting machines were being installed uh, so what we learn out of it is if if, if it's a confined area where uh, and uh, with the will of the executor what can be done is uh, uh, is that we we look at our waste as a resource i uh, just don't throw it uh, make a plan uh, get it approved uh, and with a with a community involvement uh, wet waste at least can be treated uh, by both uh, composting and uh, uh, an organic digestion method where you generate the uh, methane gas and can upgrade it and use it as a pure biogas and uh, for the inorganic waste we directly get the value from the market for anything which is inorganic except for non recyclable waste uh so that is the outcome of this uh uh so we have done yeah thank you thank you everyone uh, for your patience um um could you take up the questions uh, if we have uh, uh, I'll, i'll look at the chat box and while in the meantime i'll ask my colleagues who need to take up on the miro board exercises uh so we you can share uh, the link of exercise in the chat box box um from there the all of all of our participants in exercise would request you to uh give a brief on how do we you know uh, execute it and if anybody has facing any issues so we are here to help them to to make uh, to make it more, i will be requesting to make it more interactive please let us know wherever you find any problem if you have some concerns questions to be discussed thank you Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, we would request everyone to join the Miro board through the link provided in the chat box.
Hi, Vaishnavi. Should we start with the exercise? Yes, yes. Please proceed. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. So, as you can see in front of you on the Miro board, this is the first exercise what we are going to do. In this particular exercise, we are trying to look map what kind of landfill is available in your city. The examples which you can see in front of you are uh, the the yellow, green one is representing that we are not aware of what kind of landfill is there in my city. The second one is an open dump yard. The third one is a controlled dump yard. The fourth one is a sustainable landfill. And the last one, which you can see in the gray one, is an engineered landfill. What you all have to do is you need to take this blue uh, dot and drag it to the respective landfill which you have available in your city. Like, for example, the way I have done uh, for the open dump yard. And then once everyone is done, uh, we'll conclude this exercise. Also, should you have any question or uh, if you're not able to move the poster, please feel free to unmute yourself and let us know. Can I request all the participants to join the Miro board exercise?
I would request everyone to to join the Miro Board exercise, and if they are facing any issues, let me and Surbhi know about it, or any of us, Mohini, Vaishnavi, we all are here to help you. I would request it would be more interactive if if all the participant come and join us. Well, I believe uh, most of the participants has marked their option as open dump yard. If they, uh, we will spend another thirty seconds on this exercise and then move on to the second one. So this is the second exercise uh, we have in front of us. In this exercise, as uh, Nakul has also explained uh, in the presentation, what you all need to do is to mark the layers of a scientific landfill from A to K. And as you can see on your screen, the blue post-its, these are the options which you have in front of you. I'll read out the options for you guys. So the options which we have in front of us are plastic liner, leachate pond, groundwater, old cell, gravel, geotextile mat, soil layer, compacted clay, new cell, leachate collection pipe, and a drainage layer. For example, if you think that in A, should be groundwater. So all what you need to do is pick this post, uh, post it and drag it to the box A and respectively do the same for all the exercises. Please let us know should you face any issue in between, you can unmute yourself or write on the chat box. Just to add here another point, like this is like from where, why if we are, yeah, you know, developing a landfill from where it starts what is the first activity we do uh, or the or what is the first layer we develop and what is the last layer from there we need to take this whole route from a b c d e f g h i j k should be in the order based on the your learning of today's exercise as we got to see as i had explained what are the different components layer components in developing a landfill the participant can even unmute if they have any question or preferably they can uh, they can put their question in the chat box. Then I'll also suggest to the participant to move from layer A to K, A, then B, then C, and then D for the ease of doing it.
Hello, participants. Uh, if shall I? Are you? If you guys are done, I can tell you the final sequencing and answer of this exercise. I still see that few are still working on it. So I'll wait for another five minutes. So I guess I, all of us are <clears throat> have completed the exercise. So I'll uh, I'll in a sequence I'll announce the correct order. A is groundwater. B compacted clay. C plastic liner. D leachate collection pipe. E geotextile mat, <clears throat> F gravel, G drainage layer, H soil layer, I old cells, J new cells, K is leachate form. And I see most of uh, most of you has responded uh, correctly by and large. Sylvia, I would advise to 
to explain we can move to the next exercise you can explain that once and then we can take all right thank you nakul so as you can see in front of you um, it you need to identify and put the factors arrange the factors as per the table which is in front of you in the blue column i will request you to write your city names and then proceed further with the answers i'll give an example to you on how to do it like for example in the first on the second column of capacity you can take the posted which is volume occupied by linear system and drag it over here and here in the city name you can write your edit and write your city name like i have done for myself and then proceed do you have any question in between please feel free to unmute yourself so for the ease of doing this exercise i would request you all to first put down the city name and then start column by column like for example citing the facility second column would be capacity third then come to the cell planning fourth site preparation fifth leachate management sixth application of soil cover seventh closure and the last one eighth is the post closure it will also give an understanding on the steps as well as for the ease of understanding it will be better if we go one by one Sir, we approximately how many uh, factors do we have for each of these steps? So, for each of the step, we have three factors, uh, which are there in the post-its, Vaishnavi. Okay. Okay. for the eighth parameter which is the closure for the eighth criteria there are only two factors and for the rest there are three factors which are written in the postits uh could i request you to maybe uh, mark the first one the citing facility uh, just for the ease of understanding as to what is it that we have to do if you can mark all the three factors sure wish i'm marking in the first one yes as you all can see in the first column i have mentioned all three factors which are required for citing the facility
so those factors are water table to be uh, two meter and below uh, any habitation shall be 200 mm away from the landfill site and that the proposed landfill site should not be a part of flood plain in the last 100 years so basically those are the criteria before you select the siting facility right yeah those are the factors uh, which are important for the selection of the facility
I believe all of uh, us has finished the exercise. Shall we check for the final factors which account for different activities? Yesterday, are we good to go ahead? Yes, Nakul. I think more. Uh, I think three or four participants have marked. I think we should uh, wrap this up. Yeah. So I'll take a one by one. Uh, while citing a facility, factor one is water table to be two meter below. Second is any habitation shall be 200, minimum 200 meter away from the site. Factor third is proposed landfill site should not be a part of a floodplain in last 100 years. Should be large enough to last for 20 to 25 years. Or as per, this may change, as per the availability and if city has different zones, fifth would be shall have waste processing facility nearby. So it's advisable to have a landfill site close to the processing facility. Now, when it comes to capacity, factor one is volume occupied by the liner system. Second is cover material, daily interim or final cover and compacted density of the waste. Third is amount settlement waste undergoes due to overburden stress and biodegradation. Cell planning, <clears throat> develop it cell by cell as a factor one. Factor second is a working area is confined to smallest area possible, disposable only at a designated cell. Uh, criteria cell design, surface water management as a factor one. Factor second as staging, excess and material management. Third factor is construction cost. Fifth criteria, site preparation, the procedure. Uh, Factor one is prohibit the entry of storm runoff into landfill cells. Second factor is detailed leveling of site. Third factor is 150mm topsoil to be cut from the whole site and use it as an earth cover. Fourth factor is construction of road greater width to facilitate the trucks. Sixth criteria, leachate management. First factor is leachate head over the liner to be limited to less than 300mm. Resistant to chemical and physical attacks and biological clogging is a second factor. Withstand the weight of waste and compaction equipment without crushing is a third factor. Leachate pump operation shall be automated and alarmed as fourth factor. Seventh criteria application of soil cover. Prevent and control of environmental nuisance as a factor one. Prevention of wind blown litter is factor two. Control fire risk as a factor three, deterrence of <coughs> scavenging by birds and rodents as a factor four. Closure landfill cells within 12 months of the station of disposal of waste as a factor one. Landfill facility when no further waste disposal is proposed at site as a factor two. It doesn't have any other further factor in the exercise. Last and ninth criteria. Post closure, rehabilitation of site with vegetation, public open spaces around it, and the last factor as third factor can be used as transfer station or a barrier. Thank you. I hope uh, the exercise will help the participant to understand the subject in more detail by their own hands on experience. 